Well, it's not as far-fetched as it may seem. Hi guys, today I just wanted to share my personal opinion on why black lives matter. In no way am I trying to incite conflict, I merely want to express myself and share my thoughts and opinions. If anything I say in the video is incorrect, um, please feel free to reach out and correct me. I acknowledge that I am privileged enough to exercise my freedom of speech and petition the government for a redress of grievances. I am lucky enough to live my life on a daily basis without the fear of being persecuted for my race. I do not have to worry about how to place my hands when I walk into a store or worry about how to teach my future children on how to behave in order to not get killed. The reason why Black Lives Matter is a movement right now is because black lives never mattered in America. And this is self-evident if you look at the history and the foundation of our nation. So we all know in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue discovering, discovering, okay, the Americas. There are, discovering the Americas. Although recent years have altered the material related to Columbus, I never read in my textbooks that he was a homicidal tyrant and a rapist. He initiated the Atlantic slave trade and the American Indian genocide. At Hispaniola, he publicly beheaded three Indian leaders and he kidnapped and enslaved over 1,000 Indians and forced them to collect gold from And in return, the oh-so-generous and amazingly kind colonizer would spare their lives. Over 50,000 Indians committed mass suicide under his rule. He practiced intense abuse to all the Spanish under his rule. And his brute force and violence was so much to the point where colonists complained to the monarchy about his mismanagement. And a royal commissioner was actually dispatched. Christopher Columbus was arrested in August of 1500, brought back to Spain in chains. And what did King Ferdinand do? He granted him his freedom and also subsidized a fourth voyage. There has been a lot of controversy around the Black Lives Matter movement and a lot of people are combating it with, by saying all lives matter. And yes, okay, all lives do matter. No one supporting Black Lives Matter is invalidating other lives, but the reason why it is called Black Lives Matter is because black lives are not included in that narrative. We do not get to choose our race, and yet black people are considered dispensable and less than. In the 17th century, European settlers in North America turned to African slaves as a more abundant, cheap labor source as opposed to indentured servants who are mostly poor European. Black bodies were tortured and violated and treated as less than humans. 1641, Massachusetts is the first colony to legalize slavery. In 1662, Virginia enacts a law of hereditary slavery which is where now children are able to inherit slavery. Maryland took legal action against marriages between white women and black men in 1664. 1691, there is a penalty for manumission, which is the act of freeing slaves. There is a recurring theme going on, which is continual resistance for freedom that is not granted. Africans had known freedom they fully had lives before they were chained and brought to America. All right, black people right now are not asking for much. They are asking to be seen and acknowledged and treated as equals as human beings. 1712, slave revolts at NYC, which results in brutal executions and the enactment of even harsher slave codes. 1739, Stono Rebellion, which was the largest slave uprising in the colonies at the time, and it was cut short by colonial militia. There were 60 to 100 black casualties, 20 white casualties, and white lawmakers in South Carolina reacted to this by placing a 10-year moratorium on the importation of slaves, and they passed the Negro Act of 1740, which criminalized the assembly, education, and moving abroad of the slaves. 1897, Tervuren, the Royal Museum for Central Africa by King Leopold. One of the exhibitions that is most greatly talked about is basically a human zoo. So King Leopold had never set foot in the Congo, yet he imported 267 Congolese men, women, and children and placed them behind a fence. Slavery eventually comes to an end, but who's there? Segregation. 1896, Plessy versus Ferguson. The Supreme Court ruled that racially separate facilities, if equal, did not violate the Constitution. 
it didn't violate the 14th Amendment. So basically, our law said that segregation was not discrimination. And clearly they were wrong because late 1940s, the Civil Rights Movement begins. Black Americans began banding together to fight for equal rights. Rosa Parks in 1955, 1957, Martin Luther King Jr. and five other pastors entered the picture and they began to coordinate nonviolent protests. From enslavement to lynching to police brutality, all in the trek towards equal rights. If you can't see what the issue is here and why people are protesting, then the systemic racism that has been ingrained into our society seems to be self-evident. 1958, Belgium builds another mock African village for the Brussels World Fair. The Congolese who traveled to Belgium thought it would be for a cultural exchange, but they found themselves to be thrown behind a bamboo fence. And according to Zana and Timbala, who was a historian, Europeans who came to look at them were throwing peanuts and bananas at them. They had to make monkey noises to get the attention of their viewers. 1961, the Freedom Riders were protesting segregated bus terminals, attempted to use whites-only lunch counters and restrooms, and they were met with horrific violence. 1963, Governor George C. Wallace blocks the entrance at the University of Alabama to restrict two black students from registering. 1961 to 1967, anti-miscegenation laws are passed. For all the people saying that all lives matter, blue lives matter, Black people are overreacting. It's only been 62 years since black bodies were placed behind cages and fences for the entertainment of white audiences. And it's only been 53 years since interracial marriage was deemed legal. So now, the Declaration of Independence, 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 187 years later, Martin Luther King Jr.'s iconic I Have a Dream speech, 1863, he states, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. 57 years later, now 2020, nothing has changed. This is a paradox that our nation was built on. All men are allegedly created equal under the law, and yet, at a certain time in history, slaves were considered three-fifths of a person, three-fifths compromise. And yet, this still made the history books as a monumental moment, but this was done in order to control congressional representation. Economic and political power antics were and continue to be used to reinforce the brutal system of enslaving black bodies. The fight for freedom was and continues to be resisted by unjustified violence. 1963, 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham is bombed, killing four young girls and injuring many. February 1965, Malcolm X is assassinated. March 1965, Bloody Sunday. The Selma to Montgomery March is met with horrific police brutality. The Watts Riot, the 1967 Detroit Riots, where the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders, also known as the Kerner Commission, concluded that racism, discrimination, and poverty were the main of the causes of violence. And this quote came out from the Kerner Commission, our nation is moving towards two societies, one black, one white, separate, and unequal. Declaration of Independence at you. As many people have already said, we should love black people the way we love black culture. Why do we accept and oftentimes appropriate black culture, their bodies, fashion, athleticism, and music, but we, but we refuse to accept the people who created it? So hip hop is a mainstream genre, but it was actually created during a time of depressing poverty, violence, and repressed anger. Hip hop has roots with a deep history that is all about reclaiming one's agency and voice. It became an outlet for many, and although it is a form of entertainment, the defiant state of many artists reveal the resistance against a repressive state apparatus. Hip-hop gave a voice to the poor who were disenfranchised and mistreated by a non-inclusive white society. America, land of the free, home of the brave, is so ravished by prejudice and racial hate. It is mind-boggling to see how we are still fighting this fight to have black bodies recognized as equals, as humans, and that they deserve to live a life without fear. Disparities in arrest and incarceration can be attributed to law enforcement focusing on urban areas 
lower income communities and communities of color. The, the mass criminalization of people of color is a profound system that dates way back before the Jim Crow laws. President Trump and his slogan MAGA, Make America Great Again, does not make sense. His leadership is not leading us towards a brighter, better future where America will be great again if it was never great to begin with. It was and continues to exclude minorities, especially black bodies. Sorry if I keep looking down. I have the receipts. I tried to memorize as much as I could, but it's quite a lot of information. So let's begin. 1973, the U.S. Department of Justice under the Nixon administration sued the Trump Management Corporation for violating the Fair Housing Act. Trump had refused to rent to black tenants, and in 1975, he had to sign an agreement agreeing not to discriminate to renters of color. 1989, the controversial modern-day lynching case of the Central Park Five. Four black teenagers and one Latino teenager were accused of attacking and raping a jogger in NYC. Trump demanded that we bring back the death penalty and bring back the police. These teens spent 7 to 13 years in prison but were later vacated and were paid $41 million in a settlement by the city after DNA evidence was found that proved their innocence. Trump still to this day refuses to apologize for it. 1991, in a book titled Trumped by John O'Donnell, the former president of Trump's Plaza Hotel and Casino in, Atl in Atlantic City, quoted Trump's criticism of a black accountant where he stated, Black guys counting my money. I hate it. The only kind of people I want counting my money are short guys that wear yarmulkes every day. I think the guy is lazy. And it's probably not his fault. Because laziness is a trait in blacks. It really is. I believe that. It's not anything they can control. In 1992, the Trump Plaza and Casino had to pay a $200,000 fine because it transferred black and women dealers off tables to accommodate to a big gambler's prejudice. 2011, Trump played a major role in pushing that the country's first black president, Barack Obama, was not a U.S. citizen. He even sent investigators to Hawaii to look into his birth certificate. I want, I want him to show his birth certificate. I want him to show his birth certificate. There's something okay, on that well, birth certificate that he doesn't like. Oh my oh, God. I brought it up just routinely, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, a lot of facts are emerging, and I'm starting to wonder myself whether or not he was born in this country. So exactly. I would like to have him show his birth certificate. And can I be honest with you? I hope he can. Because if he can't, if he can't, and if he wasn't born in this country, which is a real possibility, if he doesn't, it's one of the greatest scams in the history of politics. President Barack Obama was born in the United States, period. In a pitch to black voters in 2016, Trump said, What do you have to lose by trying something new like Trump? What do you have to lose? I say it again, what do you have to lose? Look, what do you have to lose? You're living in poverty, your schools are no good, you have no jobs, 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you- What the hell do you have to lose? In February of 2017, Trump stereotyped a black reporter, April Ryan, and when she asked if he had plans to meet and work with a congressional black caucus, he repeatedly asked her to set up the meeting. August 2017, there was a white supremacist protests in Charlottesville, Virginia, and Trump repeatedly said that many sides and both sides were to blame for the violence, suggesting that the white supremacists and protesters were morally equivalent, okay? So he's basically, he sided with the white protesters, saying that they were morally the same as people protesting against racism. He received praise for defending the truth by white nationalist Richard Spencer. Throughout 2017, Trump repeatedly attacked NFL players by who, by kneeling or otherwise silently protesting during the national anthem, demonstrated against the systemic racism in America. America is plagued by injustice as our history reveals ideologically motivated suppression of racial discourse. Our current president has contributed to institutional racism, his campaign centered around harboring racial resentment. August 1955. Emmett Till, a 14-year-old boy, was brutally murdered for allegedly flirting with a white woman. 
okay? His assailants, the white woman's husband and her brother, Brian and Malam, made Emmett carry a 75-pound cotton gin van to the bank of the river and stripped him down. These two men proceeded to nearly beat him to death, gouged his eye out, shot him in the head, and then threw his body tied to the cotton gin van with barbed wire into the river. September 23rd, the panel of white male jurors acquitted both the assailants of all their charges. Their deliberations lasted a mere 67 minutes. Only a few months later, on January 1956, Bryant and Malam admitted to committing the crime. Protected by double jeopardy under the law, they told the whole story of how they kidnapped and killed Emmett Till for $4,000 to Look magazine. July 17, 2014, Eric Garner was put in a chokehold by NYPD officer Daniel Pantaleo on suspicion of selling single cigarettes from packs without tax stamps. He was put in a chokehold and he repeated the words, I can't breathe, 11 times. He lost consciousness and officers turned him to the side to ease his breathing. He remained lying on the sidewalk for seven minutes until ambulance came. Pantaleo was fired five years later. Justice. Tamir Rice was playing in a park and was shot to death for holding a fake gun. He was only 12 years old. Natasha McKenna was having a schizophrenic episode when she was restrained and tased in police custody in Fairfax County. Walter Scott was going to an auto parts store and was killed for a non-functioning brake light by Michael Slager. Michael Slager first tased him, then proceeded to shoot him multiple times, firing eight rounds from behind. Betty Jones answered the door to let Chicago police officers in to help her neighbor upstairs who called in for a domestic dispute and was killed. Philando Castile was driving home from dinner with his girlfriend and his four-year-old daughter. He was shot seven times and of the f seven, five hit him. Botham Jean was eating ice cream in his own living room in Dallas. Amber Geiger fatally shot Botham Jean and killed him when she came into his house mistaking it as her own. She was convicted, but defense attorneys countered that Geiger made a tragic and reasonable mistake and that her legal force was basically self-defense. Dominique Clayton, mother of four, was sleeping in her bed. She was killed by a police officer. She was discovered by her eight-year-old. Brianna Taylor was also asleep in her room and she was shot eight times. Not one of the officers involved have been charged. Brianna Taylor, Philando Castile, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Anthony Hill, Yvette Smith, Tatiana Jefferson, none of their killers have been charged. If this is not a clear example of racial profiling and white supremacy, I don't know what is. These are only a handful of innocent lives that have been lost and the systemic and institutionalized racism put into place. White people are continuously granted the blind eye by our justice system even when they murder someone, while black bodies are being dragged to prison for a lot of times minor crimes simply because of the color of their skin. Statistically, one in three black men born in 2001 are expected to be incarcerated in their lifetime as opposed to one in 17 white men. One in 18 black women born in 2001 can expect to be incarcerated as opposed to one out of 111 white women. Black people have historically been targeted by intentionally discriminatory criminal laws and continue to be treated this way. A study of capital cases in Philadelphia found that when the victim was white and the accused was black, defendants who are perceived to have a more stereotypical black look, I don't even know what that means, were more than twice as likely to receive a death sentence. Multiple studies demonstrate the impact of skin color on sentencing. Okay, now, with marijuana. Statistics reveal that there is not a drastic gap in the number of black and white users. However, black people are disproportionately targeted for the same crime. Countless black people have been arrested in relation to marijuana, yet there is no reform or attempt to help clear these people now that it has been legalized. Meanwhile, white people are have made this a lucrative billion dollar industry. When a black man is found with weed, smaller than the size of a penny, as in the case of Natris Patrick, he is arrested immediately. When a white girl comes out as a cannabis activist, she is labeled as a CEO. We are speaking out and rallying because black lives matter, they are worthy, and time and time again, history has repeated itself. It is 2020, 
Now is the time for change. The world and people from all backgrounds, races, are joining together for to help fight for a fundamental right. We are fighting a war with not only our government and the systemic racism that has been ingrained, but also with the skewed history that we have been taught. We are protesting to change the narration of our future. Race is not a real thing. It has no biological basis. Race is a social construct created by white supremacists to favor people with the same complexion as them and to oppress people who are deemed different. Living in such a diverse world full of color, we must strive to change the lens that remains black and white. To truly succeed, we must create a colorblind system that does not discriminate against any of the people who show up at justice's door. Police brutality, racism, discrimination, ignorance, it's nothing new. However, the future is on our hands and we're all human beings. We all bleed red. However, people only seem to be caring about the white and blue. This is not our first fight, but hopefully it will be the last. If you have the ability to speak up, which we all do, I highly encourage you to do it. To be silent is to side with the oppressor. In times of hardships like this, everyone needs to come together. As a minority, it is only right for me to help speak up for my fellow brothers and sisters who have been oppressed since the beginning of time solely based on the color of their skin. As Martin Luther King Jr. once so eloquently said, the time is always right to do what is right. Freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Countless people before us have been fighting for change. People of color face not only injustice when it comes to the legal system and institutionalized racism, but also environmental racism as well. Fight for Black Lives Matter pertains to us all. We must step up and speak up to change the world for the better. I hope this video inspires at least one other person to join in on this movement. Without the people, there is nothing. We have the voice and the power and the ability to bring about change and radiate love. What I just discussed only scratches the surface of how black people have been targeted and oppressed. I ask of you to please do your research and educate yourselves. The resources are all there for you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope everyone is staying safe. Corona is still a thing. It's dangerous out there. Please stay safe. And I ask you to use your voice for good and to speak up. If you have any questions about where I got my information, please reach out to me. I can give you all the details from where I got my sources. I'll link down some petitions that you can sign down below and organizations you can donate to. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.